a special thank you to Policy 4.0 and CoinDesk for inviting me to participate in this, this session. Let me say um, part of the context of the Bahamas really is size, and you made the contrast with, with China. And we did so as well because there was a report that China gave out about a million US dollar equivalent of the digital currency in a promotional effort. And we did the calculation and for the Bahamas, that would amount to giving out about a thousand US dollars if we were to try that approach. So clearly the scale in terms of critical mass to, to, to get something like this is different for the Bahamas. We got to the point with the central bank digital currency as part of a journey in modernizing our payment system. And the first focus really is trying to get our system more efficient. We, we also have the financial inclusion goals and particularly addressing the protection of the financial system from uh, money laundering and, and, and crimi other criminal abuses, particularly helping to improve the, the perception and the profile of, of our jurisdiction internationally. And for the Bahamas, it really amounts to identifying the interventions, which in a very small economy, um, you don't as easily get the private sector to undertake. So what is defined as a public good in a country like the Bahamas will be different from what it is like in, in some of the larger economies. Uh, we are an archipelago, so it's very scattered. And therefore for us, financial inclusion becomes comes down to the disparities in access to banking and other services if you're using the physical mode. And we are, we are grappling with the reality that for banks, the, the cost pressures have meant that branch banking is shrinking in the Bahamas and the shrinkage occurs most in those uh, remote islands of the economy. And so you have the pressures, economic and social, political, to provide what I would call transactional services, access to transactional services in those areas. And digital really is the most feasible way to go. And it means that there is a role uh, for the public sector in providing the, the infrastructure for that. In terms of the digital approach, one of the things that we, we recognize is that at least 90% of the population have access to uh, mobile devices and smart, smart mobile devices. So from the point of view of providing mobile technology for digital financial services, that provides an opening. Uh, we, but, but we do need to tackle any any gaps in terms of access, and, and we are trying to, to deal with that. So looking at modernizing and accelerating your payment system, um, first of all, what, what we are saying is that we need a digital transformation so that financial services can be delivered through the digital channels and you can remove the unevenness and access. Um, we have to anticipate what that means for having the digital um, and electronic uh, customer due diligence or KYC systems, because we also want to make certain that if, if services are provided remotely, there is centralized access to reliable information that can form the basis of establishing relationships. So we did, we, we, so we incorporated such planning in, in the design of the infrastructure for a CBDC. We also, in the case of the Bahamas, had to lay the foundation to legislative reform for new participants in the payment space. And we have to think, and this is one of the practical things that we have to think about, um, aside from the making the system simplified and risk-based for AML reasons, if you're providing a substitute for cash, then there is no discriminatory mechanism in terms of who has access to cash. So how do you design a CBDC that provides that sort of access, which means that you're now going a step beyond the traditional banking and credit card and related services where typically one assumes that somebody is of the age of majority or which is 18 years of age in most countries or some level of consent, so parental consent. So we, we are anticipating that if you go digital, digital has to include every resident in your population that is capable of transacting commercially. And therefore the system has to, to anticipate as well not only the access, but the data privacy and data protection issues that might come from miners having that digital footprint uh, more, more prominently. So those issues come to play and, and they come across as we design the, the regulatory infrastructure 
for CBDC, but as well as how we lay the, the, the framework generally for providers of electronic money, products and services. So we, 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 we but the practical issues um, really occupy a lot of your time in addition to the policy issues around access. And we had to recognize that in the case of the Bahamas, you have uh, a lot of undocumented persons in, in the country. In this case, the largest concentration would be those from Haiti. And again, you cannot say that because you're undocumented for immigration purposes, you do not have the right to hold cash and transact. So our system must anticipate in addition to the AML and other concerns, how we provide access to digital payment services to, to that subset of the population and visitors. And this is not even touching on the internationalization issues uh, that were just alluded to for, for China. So all of these uh, areas that we, 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 we began to focus on and we, we undertook policy reforms on various level before even getting to the point of, you know, uh, rolling out a software and, and, and an infrastructure for, for, for the, the sand dollars. But for us, we, we are going the route of having a, a retail CBDC, which will also have the wholesale features. And the greatest emphasis there is providing that interoperable platform for all of the financial services providers who would be providing payment services. Uh, the emphasis as well is on making sure that we address um, initial integration on some level with the banking system, build in the safeguard so that CBDC is not the substitute for your bank deposit. And so from that point of view, building in the mechanism so that you don't, you don't uh, tempt those disintermediation problems that are often uh, feared in the literature. Um, so we we focus also on trying to develop system that reduce the vulnerability of, of, of the country to, to recovery from natural disasters. And we went through the live experience of that in the Abacos and Grand Bahama after Hurricane Dorian. And getting payments up and functioning really helped in terms of getting the commercial activities uh, restarted. And so some of the, the growth that is ahead of us is understanding how, how one recover, you know, post natural disasters and getting basic commerce back and, 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 and running. Some of the important focuses for us for, in terms of a CBDC, first of all, cybersecurity. So, you know, there are very rigorous standards in terms of admitting the financial services to plug into the infrastructure to distribute uh, CBDC. So that, that is, and we also subject the central bank as the sponsor of the infrastructure to, to the rigorous uh, governance process around having a digital currency. And, and I think there's some important transparency that um, needs to, to be developed in that respect. Um, we, we also focus on the education of actual and potential users because we want persons to to adopt uh, digital use of digital financial products because for us it is more than just a, a feasibility study it, it is the only cost effective way that we're going to deliver financial services in our remote communities and so understanding what are the drivers that are encouraging or discouraging ease of comfort around use of digital products, we have to address those. And we know that some of those have to do with cybersecurity. And um, one of them, I think, also has to do with concerns about, you know, whether the government or some central authority is um, spying on your financial transactions in ways that one might not uh, be happy. I think that's an easy one to tackle because um, whether it's CBDC or some other means of electronic transaction, I think, um, we, we're trying to sensitize the, the public that uh, that digital footprint already is being created or it already exists. And one of the best interventions that one can make at these times is making certain that we have the regulations and the laws around the governance to protect our data as need be. But privacy and confidentiality, we also draw the line and making certain people understand that it's not the same as saying secrecy when it comes to the protection of the system against the 
the criminal uh, element and, and abuse. So money laundering, terrorist financing, proliferation, the safeguards for those have to be into the system. And for us, it, it speaks partly to a challenge at the outset because while we are progressing as a country towards a national system of digital identification, um, we are prepared at the outset to have the electronic KYC system that provides that need for the financial sector. And um, as the government steps in and provides the, the digital identification system, we can specialize even more around the other more specialist needs that a financial services sector might have on customer due diligence, which would go beyond just the identity element. But initially in getting to this point, you know, we've had to put a lot of ten attention to that. And on the cybersecurity, again, we have to make certain that there is education of the users around safe practices, because we think that is very important as of understanding the, the advantages of using um, digital products, but also understanding how you can be as safe or safer in, in that space than in some of the instances when you might transact in cash. So that is very, very, very important for us. And a final word, that there's a lot more that I can say, is we said that we're doing this gradually at the outset because we know that there is a learning curve. So we don't want to stir up too much uh, demand initially beyond what we can 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 manage. And so, so there is a learning process, but at the same time, we're, we're trying to sensitize stakeholders to the idea that the product that they experience today is not the end point. So this is a this is a progression, and and, and we have to be prepared to to scope out how how we would evolve, and 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 that is where we are from from the from the present case in in the Bahamas. The only thing that I would say we would have we would have liked in terms of getting to this point is to have to have done more of this outside of the confines of the pandemic, because there's still an element of human interaction that is important in terms of the stakeholder outreach and, and, and awareness. And we want to move more freely through the archipelago because it's it's important that we get the the grassroots elements of our re remote communities informed and educated on the, pro on, the, on, on the process. Michael, I will stop there and if there are questions, we can deal with those later. Uh, I